Hello healers and health seekers. It's me, Ichoda. Healing with medical medium information for 31 months now. Woo! If you're new to my channel and you want to know what I'm healing from and more about my story, if you look in the description box below the video, there's all kinds of information in there that you can click on and go to in my blog and other videos I've done that talk more about it. But today, <laughs> it's a super late What's Up Wednesday. <laughs> It's a what's up, it's a how you feeling Friday is what it is today. And I realized that it has been a couple of weeks since I have made a video. I apologize for that. I did round two of the Liver Rescue 369 cleanse and then I just, I just went inside myself in a way, but I think I was a little bit ungrounded, okay. Round two of the 369 cleanse was very powerful for me. I had some really big emotions come up during the cleanse, and then after the cleanse, I just sort of felt a little bit like free floating. I don't really have a better description for that. I just felt a little bit like not, I think a bit ungrounded and kind of not in my body, and I kind of went into myself for a while and then it, it kind of just was sort of floating through my days I, I don't really even know how to describe it I felt like so I have my weekly call with my sister circle and I noticed that in the call I it, it's like my brain didn't even connect to my mouth at all or I felt like it couldn't and I was trying to talk but it just didn't make any sense to me what I was saying and I couldn't keep a topic and <laughs> I was like a little bit brain fogged and just kind of like not myself at all. And then I think even, I'm not sure if this happened and I asked other members and they couldn't remember it happening, but I swear that I actually called one of the members like the wrong name. It was like a name that's close to hers, but not her name. And I have known her all this time and I know her. It's not like I don't know what her name is. It's just that my brain wasn't connected to my mouth and I, it just was saying whatever and I wasn't there. It was super weird. Also, it was that big full moon with the lunar eclipse and everything, the wolf moon, the blood moon. It was just, it was a lot of just sort of really, I guess intense energy, but then also I just kind of, I don't know. It was interesting because the Saturday after that cleanse, I was feeling really good and really hopeful and like supercharged and like, you know, oh, I was really excited about us moving to Colorado and I was like, okay, let's pack. And I did like literally a whole day of packing with usually just generally with my son's stuff. He wanted some stuff moved around in his room and we did that and then it kind of inspired me to get the boxes out and start packing all the extraneous stuff that, you know, we're just not going to be using until it's, you know, we move, like, there's lots of toys and stuff that he doesn't necessarily play with anymore or currently or whatever. So we got, I got a bunch of stuff packed. If you hear the snuffling in the background, that is Muffins, my pug. She is trying to get comfortable on the bed right now, which is right by the camera, and it's probably much louder than my voice. So we got, so I got so much stuff packed. I got, it looks really good too. You know what, I will, I'll show you. I got this, I got, there's this, behind me is a bathroom, right? That door right there is a bathroom. And then through that bathroom, there's a big closet in the back. That closet had been used for just kind of storage of his toys and whatever. And then I took everything out of that closet and I packed it all except while well, I had him go through it. And I was like, what do you want to keep? What can we get rid of? And so he did find a few things that we could get rid of. So we made that pile and then everything else, I packed everything. And I, oh, it felt so good. It felt so good to do it. And, and I got it all neatly packed. And now that closet is just full of packed bins and boxes. And I'm just delighted with it. The other noise you hear is, oh, my sweet Pendleton. My active, curious kitten always wants to know what's going on and what can he get into. Oh. 
<laughs> so got all that closet packed and then that was it was a long weekend too because of Martin Luther King Day here in the United States so my husband had that Monday off so it was a long weekend but for the rest of the weekend we did nothing and then for the rest of the week until today I've kind of like <laughs> just drifted through and everything I've done has been very sort of internally focused like I've done several I did do okay I did do several emotion goad sessions both for myself my family my friends and for finishing my sessions for my certification because I am getting certified to be an emotion code practitioner hopefully <laughs> and I finished my we had to finish a certain amount of sessions and then take like a final quiz and I did that so I, I did submit all of that for certification and that will be reviewed and hopefully I will be certified soon I don't know how long it takes uh, to hear back <laughs> sorry Pendleton's just getting comfortable this is how he does it but I have that done and that was kind of hanging over me like oh I need to do that by this certain date by January 21st or something and I did it and I was so pleased with myself that I did it so victory <laughs> victory check for getting my emotion code sessions in on time which was amazing and then I did I did have the energy to do more sessions for like I said myself my son my friend and I've been doing that a lot and it I can't I can't do a lot of it um, every day it's not like I can do a whole day full of sessions or anything like that it's like one or two sessions in the morning three if I'm really with it it still does take a bit of energy out of me to do it I'm not sure exactly why but like I do say a prayer before and after and I do uh, put up shields and try to protect my energy and stuff like that and so I don't know why it still drains me a little bit but sometimes it does so I, I liked I'm usually best in the morning for doing that I don't do very well in the evening or the afternoon so I do that in the morning kind of in between lemon water and celery juice and smoothie you know kind of like I fit it in in between and then I have just been preparing food every day like that's been kind of my whole day and then by afternoon I'm kind of a little bit wiped out and then the, I guess maybe the moon or something had me not sleeping so well and I don't know that just sort of that's my week just flowed that way and I didn't really do other things I didn't really talk to anybody at all and I I just sort of was within myself and I don't know I don't know but I was still managing to make food. It's not like my energy was totally gone or I was completely fatigued. I was a little more fatigued. I was a little brain fogged. So let's go back to this round two of the 369 cleanse. Again, it was so powerful with the emotions. And I think it was around like day seven or eight and it just came up and I was like angry and I was feeling sad and angry and just this rage and I got really triggered and I kind of went a little crazy <laughs> like I just I kind of I just felt again like not myself and and I I was like Rawr! and <laughs> and my husband even said to my son like does your mom usually act like that and he's like no and he said so she's doing this cleanse and I think maybe it's bringing up some emotions for her so let's just give her some space that was smart because <laughs> I don't know I wasn't wasn't me but yeah I think it really moves some stuff and emotionally but also physically because my skin went crazy now if you've been watching my videos for some time you know that my skin on my face is always a problem area as far as where dermatoxins come out and it causes my eczema to flare and all that stuff and it has been just terrible this past week this is the best it has looked and it ain't great <laughs> this I'm not even kidding you for the past like nine days this is the best as it has looked or however many days I don't even know I I really here's the thing 
I'm not worried about it. It doesn't upset me that these things are happening. I'm just noticing and I'm sharing them with you because that's what I do. I come here and I share what's going on in my journey. Even though I'm having these symptoms and I had that emotional flare, like I know that and this are both part of that cleanse. And I think what happened is in round two, it really kind of, it was moving deeper stuff out of my liver. And so I'm processing that out but it just takes a little time to process it out. And today I finally had a, this break of clarity where I was feeling like, oh, oh, I think I'm me again. Like it's like I'm back in my body, I'm here. I don't feel disconnected from myself. I don't feel disconnected from everything else. So I thought, oh, let me come and make a video real quick <laughs> while I'm here, back in myself. Because it is important to know that this healing journey is not linear and it's definitely not like a straight trajectory. Like you want it to be like this sort of straight trajectory up, right? Just like, oh, uh, it's, you know, smoothly just the ride just keeps going up. But it's really not. It's kind of more like woo, 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 woo. There's been some graphics on it of it on Instagram and Facebook multiple times that I've seen and they're pretty accurate. I mean, it just goes how it goes. Anthony William, the medical medium, he always says three steps forward, two steps back. And that is true. That is so true. It is, it is three steps forward, two steps back. But the beautiful thing is I know what's happening. I understand that I did this cleanse. I did a second round of this cleanse, which means a second round which means it gives it my body the opportunity to release more things that have been stored in the liver that it's been holding on to for a really long time to try to protect me, but it's be able to release it safely. So I'm not worried. It doesn't freak me out. I'm not going, oh my gosh, a symptom, whatever, because I know that this is just part of the process and I can go deeper into it and do more rounds of the cleanse, which actually I am going to do. I was gonna start last Saturday, but then a storm came through and I realized I didn't have all the ingredients I thought I had, so I didn't have everything I needed to do the cleanse properly. So I was like, okay, I'll just wait till this Saturday for round three. And are you wondering why I would put myself through this when <laughs> it's been like a little bit rough for me uh, with round two? It's because to me it's worth it. And right now seems like a good time because it's winter. It's a downtime of year. You know, we don't have really anywhere to be or anywhere to go. And so why not? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Muffins is snoring is really loud. And it's got to be louder than for you than it is for me because she is closer to the camera than she is to me. And I can hear her quite loudly. <laughs> I love you, Muffins. Oh, she's a sweet baby. Since I usually talk about what I'm eating, on here, I will talk about what I eat between the cleanse. Honestly, mostly I'm just eating uh, liver supportive foods. I'm, I'm eating a lot of the liver rescue applesauce as a snack every day after my, oh, I didn't have it yet today, but I will have it later. I usually have it before lunch, but sometimes I forget and eat lunch because I'm hungry. <laughs> And then I have the applesauce snack in the afternoon, which is what I did today. I've been eating a lot of, uh, my son really, really likes um, Savraj's wraps. The, her account on Instagram is Foods in My Kitchen. And she has these wraps and they're made with a gram flour, which is not garbanzo bean flour, but we make them with garbanzo bean flour because it's what we have access to easily. We use either Bob's Red Mill or namaste garbanzo flour we tried to make it with sprouted garbanzo bean flour it was a huge fail flop and it just crumbled apart and i don't know what it is about that sprouted flour but it does not hold together the way the regular garbanzo bean flour does so just word to the wise if you're gonna try to make the wraps they do fail if you use the wrong flour and it's very important for the pan to be hot you have to heat up the pan first and have it be hot enough because if the pan is not hot enough and it gradually heats up while you're cooking it, doesn't it also will crumble and fall apart and it doesn't work. So those are my two tips for making Savraj's wraps. It's not my recipe. I don't feel comfortable doing a video 
for it because it isn't my recipe. I could ask Savraj and I'm, she'd probably say yes. She's super nice. But anyway, it's her recipe. So, <laughs> so I don't want to make a video for somebody else's recipe. It doesn't seem appropriate to me. I mean, it's their information. And, and so I will give credit to them and then you can go to their page and see <laughs> where it is if you want it. I can link to her recipe below. I can do that. I can put a link to that recipe. Anyway, my son really likes these wraps and they are so good and we like to stuff them with, uh, for him, I put some avocado with lemon juice and salt and then I put a layer of lettuce and spinach and carrot or shredded uh, cab red cabbage and then I wrap it all up in the wrap and it's so crazy good because the wraps are made with onion and coriander and you can, you can, when I ran out of coriander recently, which I did, I substituted just pepper and paprika and it was still super good and it tasted, oh my gosh, it was so good. Cause I was like, what would taste the most like coriander <laughs> if I don't have, and I was like, well, I, anyway, I tried it cause it does have sort of an eggy flavor. I am talking way too long about this recipe. Okay. It was good. So <laughs> anyway, so I've been eating those and just a ton of Brussels sprouts, so many Brussels sprouts. That's kind of mostly what I've been eating. Like the, in addition to my normal morning of lemon water, celery juice, heavy metal detox smoothie, then for lunch we'll have the wraps and for dinner we'll have some sort of liver rescue recipe. Sometimes the quiche. Most of the time I just eat Brussels sprouts all the time. And I'll have like a salad and stuff like that. And then I'll have lemon water. And every night still, I've also been having lemon water and the hibiscus slash lemon balm tea every single night. Because my liver likes it. And my liver likes lots of apples and lots of Brussels sprouts. So I just keep going with that. And sometimes I'll even have asparagus. It's kind of crazy to me to think that on non-cleanse days that I'm still eating the same foods that I would be eating on the cleanse days. Like what? How am I not cleansing? It's just because I'm not doing them in that specific order and I'm not doing them, um, you know, in that order of days and then in that order of eating. But I'm still eating the spinach soup. I'm still eating all of the liver cleansing foods. That muffins is really, just got that snore. I just don't have the heart to not let her in. She has to accompany me when I come and do a video. It's her thing and I can't say no. Banana life. She is, she's loud. So that is what I've been eating and I'll do a separate video about uh, my thoughts about us moving to Colorado and this process because it's definitely weighing on me in ways. I'm excited in ways but it's weighing on me in ways and it's probably not. In the healing journey as much as possible of course you want to try to keep your adrenaline from running because adrenaline is the virus's favorite food and your liver doesn't like it either because your liver has to, if you're, you've got adrenaline going through your body, your liver has to sop it up. I learned all about this thanks to Medical Medium's freaking awesome book, Liver Rescue. And when your liver has to spend time sopping up all the adrenaline and trying to protect you from that, it can't do its other jobs properly and it's you know it's like doing too many things and it gets overwhelmed and my liver is already overwhelmed and overworked and my job right now full time is to help support my liver and help it not have to work so hard so i am currently it's almost it's counterintuitive to say that i'm trying really hard because that even implies like pushing against or whatever and I don't know how to phrase this. My goal is to keep my adrenaline from running and that is not always easy. I'll say that because I am a Virgo quite frankly and it doesn't even matter if you ascribe to astrology or whatever but the thing is is that my brain is a very analytical brain and automatically whenever there's anything put in front of it, it wants to solve it. It wants to analyze and figure out and solve and keep it in a sort of controlled box that it understands. It wants to understand it. That is, and, and that can be to my benefit because I have a deep 
thirst for knowledge and I love learning about things and understanding them and that can be really fulfilling but it can also be to my detriment because when there's something that I'm trying to let go and relax and trust with like our trip to Colorado I have mapped out all the details and I have figured out the logistics of what we need to for our trip and I have handled those things okay that is done that work is done so I would like for my brain to be like cool it's done I don't have to think about it right now because if I think about it I go in a spiral <laughs> And I start spiraling, and then it turns into something else, and I worry and whatever. I want to just let it go and trust and let our path unfold as it does. And have our intentions for what we're wanting to find and create. And then leave that and trust the universe that that's going to happen. And what's happening instead is my brain is trying to solve it because it doesn't know yet and it wants to know and it wants to control it and it wants to it wants to solve the puzzle and I'm like mm, it's not a puzzle <laughs> let it go you know but I'm a little bit in a dualistic situation <laughs> with between my brain and my heart or I guess you could say because that kind of can run the adrenaline you know it can it can really take me out of island life mentality and out of relaxation. So my hope is that this clarity is going to stick with me, especially if the, since I am going to start another round of this 369 cleanse starting tomorrow, I hope, and then that I will keep making videos every week like I mean to. Because the other thing is, is when I don't make a video each week, I kind of get out of the flow of making a video. I have a certain flow about it, you know, like, and it works and I like it and I want to keep it. And when I don't, I feel a little bit drifty, a little bit adrift, a little bit unsure, a little bit lost. And I like feeling focused and I like feeling purposeful and I like having that intention which is, I think, part of why I really love being doing the cleanse because A, it's a short cleanse, so I don't feel pressured by it. And B, uh, it has very specific foods and rules and I, I sort of like the structure. I like having that structure. I don't like having a fully structured environment or life, but I like having certain structural aspects to my life. And so... Anyway, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing the cleanse again, uh, around another round of the cleanse. Hopefully I will, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, if I'm going to try to record it or what I'm going to do. So we'll find out. It'll be a surprise to all of us, me included, because I haven't thought about that. But I will, since I'm going to start tomorrow, I better think about it. See, now at this point with the cleanse, the foods are easy. It's just what, what else do I want to do around it? And how do I want to handle, like, do I want to journal every day? Yes, I do. And do I want to do a, a vlog every day of, of it? Perhaps. And But if I do that, of course, I will not be posting it until the cleanse is finished because I don't want the pressure of having to try to edit and upload a video every day of the class because it's too much for me. It's too much for me to ask of myself. I did it on round one and I'm super proud that I was able to accomplish it even though it wasn't consistent days in a row, it, but I did do it. And so that's great, but I'm not going to do that to myself again. Anyway. So since I didn't post a video last week, I didn't get to hear from you guys last week. And I want to know how you're doing. How's everybody feeling, especially with that wolf blood moon that just happened? <laughs> did it knock you off your butt like it did me? And how are you going with your medical medium lifestyle? Like, are you struggling? Because it's winter. It's winter here and in Australia. It is the blazingest, hottest summer that you can imagine. 118 degrees Fahrenheit, which is crazy. So I know that wherever you are, at least, you know, in these two parts of the world, not that the U.S. and Australia are the only places that exist. It's just that currently, like, I guess kind of Wisconsin and or East Coast winter or anywhere north winter versus the crazy hot summer. Those are the two extremes right now. 
either way, it's going to be difficult because when the seasons change, our liver function changes a bit and our liver can dump a little bit. And even the when it's cold like this, like the function of the liver can go down. Sometimes the body has to release adrenaline to keep us warm if we're too cold. And I'm not sure what happens if we're too hot. It doesn't seem like it would release adrenaline because adrenaline is hot. And so, I mean, maybe it detoxes you a bit. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's just speculation. I have no idea. So it can be tough and I would love to hear from you wherever you are in the world and and whatever's going on with you I would love to know tell me in the comments below scroll all the way down on your phone for the comments for some reason the comments are like all the way below thank you my beautiful healers and health seekers I love you so 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 much I seriously I really really do thank you for watching this video if you like it please give it a thumbs up below you can subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button down there and you can ding the bell next to it if you want to be notified when I post a new video. I really do try to upload weekly, if not, you know, a couple times a week. And sometimes I succeed and it's great and other times I'm a woman of mystery and it takes a little longer. Healing is a journey and you never know how it, where it's going to take you, but it's always worth it to me. It doesn't matter. It's always worth it to me. Hey, if you're still watching, because <laughs> I've already done my sign off stuff, but remember I talked about plantar fasciitis in the video a couple of videos ago, and it really does seem to be improving. I'm not having that symptom as much anymore. Still a little bit of stiffness in my foot, but I'm not feeling the pain so much anymore. So yay, it was just a little something coming out of my liver, I think. I really do kind of cool. I will see you next time my healers and health seekers. Stay curious and I'll see you next time which I already said. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I love you. Ah.